Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Thierry Chaumeron from uh, Claude Watt, and uh, we have uh, Foucault de Bonneval. I am uh, I'm Foucault de Bonneval, product owner at uh, Claude Watt. We are going to present to you how to scale SDN and the choices we've made in Claude Watt. First of all, I would like to introduce a story about who is Claude Watt. So the key question with the cloud is, who will take care of my digital data? Those digital data, they can be financial, industrial, personal, patrimonial, health data, or that could be data related to email. So who? And the paradigm is, uh, what is the affordability of getting privacy, security, and durability? There are two curves. There is the curve of privacy, security, and durability assurance. And there is the curve of the TCO, which is the cost. Either you believe in yourself, I do it myself. Yes, I can. Sure, it's possible. But the cost of doing it can be pretty expensive. You can do it via private cloud. And depending on the private cloud choice, you see these little bumps, it's more or less expensive. It can be as do-it-yourself, uh, depending on what you do. Then there are very attractive multiple public clouds available. And uh, they're cheap, low price. However, the question there is, uh, what is the level of uh, security, privacy, and durability I'm getting? It varies, depending on the supplier. And there is so-called sovereign public cloud. Our sole goal is to deliver privacy, security, and durability of your data at the low cost of public cloud. So to ensure privacy, security, durability of your digital data at the low cost of ownership of a public cloud is our mission. This is Claude Watt, and we are in France, and with the sovereign cloud provider in France for doing this. How do I get managed services in a public cloud? So in Cloud what we offer YAS, Object Store, Hadoop as a service. But all the layer of managed services is offered through partners. So if you want to use Cloud what services, you will go through partners. And here you see a subset of the partners working with us. For which use case will you use CloudWatt and public cloud services? It can be dev and test. It can be production grade hybrid cloud. It can be big data, Hadoop as a service. It can be high traffic web hosting. It can be cloud for media. Or it can be SaaS applications. So how does SDN and network serve these use cases? Here you see a panel of uh, rating how important is the network and SDN for a given use case. So in column, you see the use cases, like cloud for media, high traffic website, hybrid dev and test, yes for SaaS, Hadoop, and health. And in line, you see the uh, different services that you get from your SDN and network. Hey, it's not exactly in front, but uh, so the first one is subnet and vRouters. And what you want to get is flexibility in designing your network, designing your sub subnet vRouters. You want no limit in the number of routers you use and in the number of subnet you design. With Open Control, what we use, there is a complete transparent integration within Neutron. And we have soon SourceNet coming with the version 1.10. Hey. 
The second side is the bandwidth. So bandwidth, we've used open the switch in the past at the beginning, and we were able to reach about 900 megabit per second outbound of a VM. With open control, we are exceeding 7 gigabits outbound of a VM. So that's, we've already seen that live in our network. And we have no explicit limitation egress of a tenant. So we can have multiple tens of gigabytes outside of a tenant. There is no limitation like because of a router uh, bandwidth limitation. Latency. Latency is very important. I think this thing gets a little bit crowded, probably because of the uh, Apple. <laughs> um, latency um, is very important. And in France, we get minimal latency, uh, thanks to our network and thanks to our location in France. So we're a French cloud provider, and it's very important that we reach French enterprises and customers, as well as European. So you can go on Selexis or Cloud Screener to see the benchmark of latencies, and we'll, you will see that uh, we're number one in latency, minimal latency on Object Store. We offer end-to-end -end direct connection, and also one thing which is very interesting is end-to-end -end private MPLS VSR from sub-network in the cloud up to the intranet of the customer, so that you have a single addressing plan and everything is private. And now I suggest live demo for the new features. OK, so um, as Thierry said, uh, we are uh, French cloud provider and uh, our stack is mainly is based on uh, uh, open stack and uh, open contrail um, does some people around uh, who knows about open contrail okay cool um, so the thing is that uh, when we started with open contrail uh, it was freshly open sourced and uh, we needed to get quickly uh, up to speed and, um, oops, sorry, problem. Um, <clears throat> and we needed a performance overlay and an open source overlay. But there was a couple of features missing. Um, the two main features that we wanted to have quickly was source net, uh, meaning when you plug a network, to, uh, to a, a router and this router to internet, you want that your VM get access, gain access to internet automatically. Um, this feature was developed by uh, some guys of Cloudwatt with uh, working with the Open Control team, and uh, uh, and I want to. That's the demo I want to do, but I would like my screen to be more viewable. Okay, it's getting better. More, more, more. You want more? Okay. Uh, okay, so I, I prepared a series of, of common lines to show you. Uh, I think most of you are uh, aware of uh, how network works in, uh, in, uh, in OpenStack. Um, what I want to do, I want to create something like that, uh, meaning just the right side, so a virtual network with two servers, uh, the router and the internet. So I just want to prove that the uh, the virtual machine can configure themse themselves, download a web server, 
and host a very small page with just the server ID inside. And then if I have time, I, will, I just want to bootstrap a load balancer as a service instance and add these two servers to the load balancer, present this load balancer to the outside network, and show you that we can reach and that we load balance on the VM. Uh, for that, I need to clean up my stack. So I, I have crea already created the, the network uh, and the subnet associated. And I am going to launch these two servers uh, with the metadata that uh, will tell to server one to us the web server server one uh, my key and the network I want them to connect to. Okay, so I get my two VMs started and I get them back here. <clears throat> In the meantime, I can start to prepare my uh, load balancer. Um, I'm going to create the uh, new pool with two members. So I know the IP my uh, VMs are going to gain, but that's something you can configure dynamically in a uh, release and, uh, and, with, uh, and with the heat. Um, and then I'm going to create the VIP for my load balancer for the two VMs. So let's see where, where our VM are. Okay, so VMs are not yet configured with the web server. That shouldn't be long. So I get my pool. <coughs> and I get my VIP here. So my VIP is uh, on the 20.20.20.2 address. And what I can do is I can associate this VIP with a floating IP, which, may, which allow us to reach the VM from the outside. So I just have to pick a floating IP. Putting IP associates. So that's my board, my floating IP ID. So now my floating IP is associated to my VIP from my load balancer, and I hope my VM finally are configured. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oops. Okay, so I get my plan B. My plan B is a already configured stack if I can. Ah, okay, my demo is
So that's the same stack in another tenant. That should be. Why is that stack? No, that. Okay, I get four minutes left. Um, That was my floating IP. On the other one, and so we get the same design on this stack uh, with my two servers, my VIP inside in the 20 network, attached to the floating IP, which is the 85. And as we can see there, we get the server name that's changing, meaning that each request is uh, going to a different server. OK, sorry for the demo. Tia, <laughs> um, you want to conclude? Yeah. I just wanted to say uh, it, it's the first time in the world um, I think <laughs> we get to such a demo with this feature, with this overlay, and with the ISIS release. Uh, we're working very hard to get this uh, in our production platform uh, very, very soon. Uh, so our clients will meet a, a, a level of, uh, of quality that's meeting the reference implementation of Neutron and OpenStack. Um, so that's it. So thank you, Foucault. And uh, so you've seen the first live demo of a load balancer on Open Contrail. Um, just to say what's behind the scene of CloudWatt is um, we are, uh, whoops, hold on. Um, we are using uh, open source uh, from uh, head to feet. And uh, this is uh, OpenStack, OpenContrail, and Hadoop for uh, Hadoop as a service. And I would like to say a big thanks to the open source communities. Uh, certainly, we contribute, but we get more than what we contribute. So, thank you. Oh yeah, and, uh, we, yeah. We can remind just the 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 the, the project DNA uh, uh, of CloudWatt is uh, and why we choose Open Contrail. Um, it's CloudWatt is one hundred percent open source. Uh, or 99.99 percent open source. Uh, we didn't want any vendor locking on our uh, production platform, and we want to use standard protocols like BGP, like MPLS, and like GRE. And that's uh, what we get with Open Contrail. And the the four points I picked from uh, uh, Open Contrail's archi uh, architecture strength is that we have a fully distributed vRouter, meaning that the L3 agents are hosted on each compute node, which makes uh, no single point of, uh, of transit of the traffic, um, mostly the north, uh, south to north traffic. We get a full slash 33 um, general routing, uh, meaning that Every IP is announced inside the network, and if a floating IP is not used inside the overlay, it's not announced outside. So you can stop the traffic destined to these IPs on the border, which is really great. That um, control plane and data plane are fully independent, uh, and analytics also. So you can have one component you can have your data plane working while the rest is down. And we have a, a, very, um, a very, very nice feature that all the Elbas demo that I did and the SourceNet demo that I did are fully available uh, because natively in the system, we can spawn two instances of each, and uh, it just failovers automatically. So uh, thank you uh, for your time and attention.
So that was a quite, you know, first demo of uh, Elbas on Open Contrail. Interesting. You can uh, join our public cloud at uh, www.cloudwatt.com. We have free resources uh, there. And you can meet us uh, at our booth if you have a question. As well, CloudWatt is hiring, so you're welcome to uh, if you're interested. Thank you.